not call it. That's my call. You mean? Yes. I'm Jay Peter. <laughs> my friends, a toast. As the woolly-haired Melanesians of Papua New Guinea once said. <laughs> Who's dancing? No. All right, I'll just have to get things started. <laughs> oh, what a stirring little anthem of wellness. <laughs> Elaine! Mr. Peterman, no. Uh... We missed you at the Get Well party. Poor old Walt has a polyp in the do one of them. Oh, Elaine! This dry air is curing me like a black forest ham. <laughs> this is incoherent drivel. Elaine, who among us hasn't snuck into the break room to nibble on a love Newton? They capture that indefinable romance that was Camelot. Whatever. Well, I see what's going on here. I am smack dab in the middle of a good old-fashioned catfight. Oh, I'll be inaugurating him this weekend with none other than Ethel Kennedy. A woman whose triumph in the face of tragedy is succeeded only by her proclivity to procreate. That noise. That's the noise! What? That infernal rattling sound that has plagued me these past two days and I could not find the source. In my office, in the hallway, even in the men's room. Shame on you, Elaine! No, no, Mr. Peterman, that wasn't me. That reminds me of the Haitian voodoo rattle torture. <laughs> You haven't gone over to their side, have you? No, Mr. Peterman. Because if I hear one more rattle, just one, you're out on your can. And if you are undead, I'll find out about that, too. Hey. No, Jerry's got nothing. Newman's got nothing. You're the only one I know who's got the good stuff, and I need a bad baby because I feel like I got bugs crawling up my skin. Now, you gotta help me out. Not on my watch! What's the matter? I have you turn in my office into a den of iniquity! You have it! Your big somewhere, wet gone, Peter. <laughs> Mr. Peterman, what are you doing? Elaine, you're out of control. You need help. Huh? I know what you're going through. I too once fell under the spell of opium. It was 1979. I was traveling the Yangtze in search of a Mongolian horsehair vest. Oh, I had got to the market after sundown. All of the clothing traders had gone. But a different sort of trader still looked about. Just a taste, he said. That was all it took. Mr. Peterman, I don't know what's going on here. I am not addicted to anything. Oh, Elaine. The toll road of denial is a long and dangerous one. The price? Your soul. In the distance, I heard the bulls. But I began running as fast as I could. Fortunately, I was wearing my Italian cap to Oxfords. <laughs> Sophisticated, yet different, without making a huge fuss about it. Rich, dark brown calfskin leather, matching linen vamp. Men's hole in half sizes, 7 through 13, price $135. I'm afraid the problem with Zach is more serious. He's back on the horse, Elaine. Smack. White Palace, the Chinaman's nightcap. <laughs> Well, it just keeps getting better. And in a tiny way, I almost feel responsible. I'm the one who sent him to Thailand in search of low-cost whistles. <laughs> Filled his head with pseudo-erotic tales of my own opium excursions. Plus, I gave him some phone numbers of places he could score near the hotel. Mr. Peterman, here are these pages. One that you moment. <laughs> I'm reading the most fascinating article on the most fascinating people of the year. And... I don't think I'll ever be able to forget, Susie. <laughs> and most of all, I will never forget that one night, working late on the catalog. Just the two of us. And we surrendered to temptation. <laughs> and it was pretty good. Flash of lightning, Elaine, I just realized why I like this cartoon so much. Oh, do tell, sir. It's a Ziggy. A Ziggy? That irreverence, that wit, I'd recognize it anywhere. Some charlatan has stolen a Ziggy and passed it off as his own. I can prove it. Quick, Elaine, to my archives. No pears. Mr. Peterman? No apples. Um. Where's my pineapple? Are you okay, Mr. Peterman? Yes, yes. Go on, go on, go on. Well? 
See, it's businessmen taking siestas. You know, it's the, uh, the urban sombrero. Mr. Peterman? <laughs> Mr. Peterman, thanks for having me over. I... Your place isn't quite what I imagined. Oh, it's just a place to flop. <laughs> well, what part of your life do you want to start with? Porn intrigue? Exotic romance? Oh, Elaine, we've covered all of that in the catalog. Ad nauseum. Oh, I would like this book to be about my day-to-day -day life. Oh. oh. Damn, they changed the cable stations again just when I finally memorized them. Oh, Mr. Peterman, do you want to... Two, CBS. Get, um... Three. I don't know what that is. Where's my damn preview channel? Well, I... I gotta tell you, Mr. Peterman, I, I don't know if I see a whole book here. Well, I'm sure we'll come up with something. What do you say you and I order ourselves a pie? Do you like Lorenzo's? Oh, damn, I forgot to buy plant food again. Oh, I bet I got a coupon for it. <laughs> Kramer, my friend, that is one ripping good yarn. Uh, you know, if you like that one, I got more. <laughs> And what are you looking for? Uh, romance? Uh, comedy? Adventure? Erotica? Um, no, uh, Kramer, I don't think... How that's... much would you take for the whole lot? <laughs> My whole life. Name your price, man. $1,500. I'll give you half that. Done. Peterman here. Mr. Peterson, you got to sell me my stories back. You want to know something? I no longer need them. No, no, Mr. Peterman, why don't we keep them as a, as a reference? Nonsense. I have Bennis's wonderfully imaginative mind to spin my stories. You take back your tales, you vagabond. There you are, Elaine. Go forth and create. And by the way, when you get to that chapter about my romantic escapades, feel free to toss yourself into the mix. Be effective immediately, Miss Bennis will return to her old position at her original salary, and I, of course, will return to mine. Kudos, Elaine, on a job. Done. What about my stock options? I think not. <laughs> now, down to business. I have had this vision of a diaphanous rum runner scarf. How much is she worth? I'd say about 219. <laughs> 219 thousand dollars. Lou Beck, you glorious titwillow, you just made me a profit of 190 thousand dollars. No. Two dollars and nineteen cents. It's an intimate's. Do they have a castle at Windsor? <laughs> no, they have a display case at the end of the aisle. <laughs> oh, good lord. Is the item still with you? Um, well, as far as I know. Do you know what happens to a butter base frosting after six decades in a poorly ventilated English basement? Uh, I, I guess I hadn't. Well, really... I have a feeling what you are about to go through is punishment enough. <laughs> I never knew Kennedy had such a temper. <laughs> Mr. Peterman, this is uh, George Costanza. Jay Peterman. Jay Crew. <laughs> <laughs> so, is uh, Elaine here? Oh, Elaine just called. She won't be joining us. Well, not to worry. I'll tell the maitre d' it'll just be the three bulls. <laughs> oh, Fong has been most accommodating. Shall we? Uh, actually, you know, I just remembered. I promised this comedy club that I'd do a set tonight, so I'm terribly sorry. I understand. No hard feelings. George and I will miss your company. Huh? It'll just be two this evening. And George, we dine. And there, tucked into the river's bend, was the object of my search. The Guanjaya River Market. Fabrics and spices traded under a star in the sky. <laughs> it was there that I discovered the Pamplona Beret. Size is seven and a half to eight and three quarters. Price, thirty-five dollars. <laughs> this is very nice, but I, I really could take a cab. Really? Uh, 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 nonsense, George. 
Besides, it gives me a chance to tell you about my latest trip to Burma. I discovered a very unusual corduroy. <laughs> Peterman here. What? Oh, no. All right, I'll be right there. It's my mother. She's at death's door. What? I just pray to God we can make it there in time. <laughs> you haven't seen it? That's it. Drop everything. We're going right now. And I thought I knew what love was. I can't do this anymore. I can't. It's too long. Quit telling your stupid story about the stupid desert and just die already. Die! Shh! You mean you don't like the movie? I hate it! I'm going to hell! Hello, Mr. Peterman. How are you feeling? Elaine, I'll be blunt. I'm burnt out. I'm fried. My mind is as barren as the surface of the moon. I can run that catalog no longer. What? Well, who's going to do it? What about you? Me? Why me? Why, indeed. <laughs> Mr. Peterman, you can't leave. I've already left, Elaine. I'm in Burma. Burma? Uh, you most likely know it as Myanmar. But it'll always be Burma to me. Oh, sure, Elaine! You there, on the motorbike! Sell me one of your melons! 